Good morning to you. I hope you can't hear the pitter-patter of raindrops too loudly on my roof. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to have to compete with the weather. I actually was expecting a better day today. But uh, we never can tell what a day brings, can we? And um, a bit like what's going on at the moment with uh, this war in um, Eastern Europe. You just can't predict. You can't tell what's happening. And I'm just so aware um, this morning of the fact that the more we look at things, sometimes the murkier they seem to get. And it's as though a blanket of deception is, is falling upon the world. And uh, because of that deception, <clears throat> the devil's able to operate. That's how he does it, doesn't he? He operates in darkness. And um, the term conspiracy theory comes to me today. I often hear people say, well, I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but I have this thought about something. And we all have a particular thought and an idea, don't we, about, about the way things are. Um, I see it too in the, in the comments and how much, well, the diversity, really, of what people think and say. But what is, it, what is a conspiracy theory? What does it really do? And uh, I, I've written down three words here that conspiracy theory is, is, is um, purpose to do at times, and that's this, <clears throat> to debunk and to refute and to reject truth. To debunk, refute and reject truth. That's how the devil works. He gives a whole concoction of lies and then he presents that as, as some sort of a truth, an, an idea that all people can believe in. And um, Isaiah speaks specifically to that. And I want to look at chapter 8 in Isaiah and just look at a few verses and see what it's saying here. Um, we know that, uh, well, right the way through the centuries, those of us that are interested in the way that men work behind the scenes, uh, we've all heard of the Illuminati and all these sorts of things. And um, I myself actually have been a student of these things for, for, for many decades now, looking at the way that men operate behind the scenes. And um, it's quite clear that men love secrecy. They love the idea of clustering together and conspiring or taking counsel together, as it says in, in, um, in, in King James. Men love to take counsel and devise a scheme. But we want to look at who's behind the scheme, don't we? Who's the real schemer behind the men? We can say that we don't like a certain politician. We don't like the way that they operate. And um, we know that when that happens, those men um, often are mis misunderstood, misrepresented. And uh, I won't go into who I'm thinking of particularly, but uh, a certain American election will give you a clue. And uh, that's the way the enemy works. He, he works behind the scenes all the time. So let's have a look at chapter 8 and just look at some verses here. I'll read 11 to 13. And then I'll just also want to read verses 19 and 20, just to sort of skip across to that. For the Lord spake thus unto me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying... Say ye not a confederacy, or we could substitute that with conspiracy, as some translations do. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And in verses 19 and 20. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Do not fear what they fear. What is the idea behind a conspiracy theory? What's the idea behind it? When it's propagated in the media, it's to instill fear. Men start to get scared that people are conspiring. We do it in small ways, don't we? Even perhaps in your workplace, you might feel um, <clears throat> a little bit uh, attacked at times. Um, you might feel that you're being mistreated wrongly. 
um, you might feel that you're being misrepresented. And then you start to get what, what the world uses the term, doesn't it? Paranoid. I feel paranoid. And it's almost as though at the moment across the world in the last couple of years, there's a, a blanket global paranoia that's come upon the world. But have you noticed something? That there's more confusion now, especially with the pandemic. There's more and more confusion now than there was at the beginning. People are believing all kinds of things. It's easy now, isn't it, with video and film to doctor things, to make things look, even at the, to the visual eye, as though what we're seeing is the truth, when in fact it's a lie. But this morning, <clears throat> I just want to anchor you. Oh, the Holy Spirit wants to anchor you, I believe, in, in God's Word. Um, and I just wanted to present to you, really, the fact that when we fear what they fear, we lose our power, we lose our strength. And um, when we lose our power and strength, we start to get confused. And we end up possibly believing um, it's like a genuine conspiracy theories, ideas that really um, come out of fantasy. And the important thing is that we don't fear what they fear. We are a people apart. That's really what I want to say this morning. We are a people apart. And um, verses 19 and 20 really struck me here. When they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and mutter. Very often that's been referred to as the, uh, the digital age that we live in, isn't it? The computers, I've mentioned this before. Seeking unto God, seeking the truth through error. Those of you that watch mainstream media um, we'll know that it's so difficult isn't it to discern what is the truth and what isn't it's a bit like eating fish with lots of bones in you know you kind of pick your way through because you don't want to swallow something that's going to stick in your throat it becomes more and more difficult even at times with alternative media I have to say and I've been a follower of alternative media but men are the ones that analyze God is the one that realizes Men analyze and God realizes. And he brings to us the truth, doesn't he? So verse 19, talking there about consulting something else other than the Lord. And I've written in here to make sure I don't forget it. There is to be no mixture. And it's that mixture, isn't it? It's that fish and bones that we, we get that sticks in our throat at times as we watch the news. Situation going on with Ukraine. As I spoke of the other day, that uh, behind this is the Russia-China alliance. But there's also something behind the character of these men, isn't there, that, that are propagating these situations. Um, often it's said of, of men like Putin that, um, yes, he is in the situation that, that he is. He is propagating a war, but at the same time, he's also been somebody that stood against the global powers and often been made a scapegoat as we look back to the American political situation over the last few years. How um, Mr. Trump was accused of collaborating with Russia. So Russia's always been the demon. And so now we find that men are now producing conspiracy in order to make us believe a certain narrative. And there's not always truth in every narrative. This is the thing because we're starting to look to the wizards that peep and mutter you know, to what everyone is saying on the internet and um, as it says here in verse 20 and it's an, a key verse here in Isaiah 8 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word this word this word of God it is because there is no light in them so effectively really what it's saying is that um, when we listen to to the mixture when we listen to what men have to say, um, apart from God's word, there is no light in them. And we're constantly wanting to follow people, aren't we? Paul exhorted us not to follow anyone really, but the Lord. Don't follow Apollos. Don't follow teachers that you listen to. Don't follow what I have to say. Don't follow men, because men get it wrong. And that's the way it is, isn't it? I mean, unless we're looking upward to the Lord, Unless we're waiting and hanging out for every word, um, 
we all start to believe the lies. I've written this, deception lurks to snatch away the truth by using lies as the bait. Deception lurks to snatch away the truth by using lies as the bait. We get pulled in all the time. We're going to be hearing lies. We hear lies a lot more in the world than we do truth, don't we? And so God warns us, <clears throat> be careful of people that are in powerful positions because men are always tempted to unhealthy alliances. There'll always be the temptation in man to conspire. We see it in the churches too. How many churches don't break up and split apart through ideas that people have of what people, other people think, what other people say, and the way you interpret something. That's what it's all about, isn't it? This is how theories are built. They're built on interpretations. But the most important thing really for me is this, what is the record of actions of a man? What is a man's record of actions? You know them by their fruits. And that applies to everybody, doesn't it? Whether they're um, in politics or economics or whatever, we know them by their fruits. We know that if they're not believers, there is no light in them at all. We also know that there are many that claim to be believers, and yet their actions don't show it, particularly on the world stage. They allow maybe corrupt ministers to stay in place. They allow situations to continue without really considering Christ in, their, in the way that they um, do their politics. So um, many of them follow Christ for expediency. Many American presidents also have claimed to be born again. I'm born again, so therefore I'm going to govern this country the way it should be governed. Very often these men just use the name of Christ just to, um, to get onto a certain popularity platform. Trust no man in power is what I say. The most important thing is this, is to stay simple in your thinking. To be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Don't always be assured that you're leader or the person you follow is several steps ahead. It was often said, wasn't it, uh, President Trump when he was in power that he, he plays 4D chess or 5D chess or something like that. We always assume, don't we, that because a man has certain right words, that um, those right words are, are the things that uh, mean that everything he says is right. We know that that isn't the truth. <clears throat> we mustn't excuse the actions of men. Don't excuse what men do. So if you sense in your spirit that something is questionable, test and weigh it. Always test and weigh. I want to use a few more scriptures here just to confirm what I'm saying. Um, here's Psalm 2, verses 1 to 4. Psalm 2, verses 1 to 4. And it says here, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, you see, and rulers take counsel together. There it is, the conspiracy. And they take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Men will take counsel together. But God looks down on that counsel from an aerial view. And he can see that the hearts of men are um, deceitful and beyond cure. Proverbs 1, and it's verses 10 to 15. Proverbs 1, 10 to 15. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us wait for blood. Let us lurk privily. Remember, I used the word lurk earlier on. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole, as those that go down into the pit. You see, it's all about let us, let us, let us. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. <laughs> Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. You see, the us sometimes is the majority, isn't it? We always sometimes believe that because it's the majority, 
the majority has the truth. A bit like mainstream media. You know, mainstream media has the truth because it's the majority. But the majority of people can't be wrong taking a certain medical procedure, can they? But we know in the end that it's the Churchills of this world that speak against the tide, that say, no, don't throw in your lot with them. Don't believe the majority. There's two more scriptures, Matthew 22 and verse 15. And it says this, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel, see, they conspired how they might entangle him in his talk. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him. This is what conspiracy theory really does. <clears throat> if you believe the lies of men, you get entangled. You get twisted up until eventually you can't discern the right hand from the left. So the men conspired together. They had one purse. And of course we know that Man's intention, if he doesn't serve the Lord, is to serve mammon, is to have a purse. And that that purse is the thing that they put their trust in. Finishing up here in 1 John, and it's verse 5, sorry, chapter 5, verse 19. And <clears throat> this, this is the basic truth of really what all of I've said now, up to now. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness the whole take note of those words this morning the whole world lieth in wickedness everything that is in the world is in wickedness in sin and under the power of the evil one we know that no good comes of the ideas of men men will conspire they will produce all kinds of ideas and sometimes it's best really almost to, to even stop believing what you think is, is, is something that has been said to you as truth. Go, come aside with it, test it, weigh it. Consider what God is saying at this time. Look to the actions of men, not just to what they say. And um, then we know that, that the truth will come through. The truth will set you free. And let us earnestly seek the Lord more than ever. Because, the, as I've said before, the, the din of lies is getting louder and louder around our ears. And um, it's going to be harder and harder to discern the truth as the times go on. So I commit that to you this morning and uh, pray that you will, um, will listen to the Lord first. And then watch the news, well, with the inevitable, the, so the proverbial pinch of salt. Take every w word that men say um, and weigh them carefully so that you don't get deceived, because that deception, that power of deception is above the world now like never before. So have a blessed day, and be alert.